All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you a very specific video codec playback test with inside DaVinci Resolve, and that particular video codec is VP9. Now, the thing is, I didn't actually think that Resolve could see VP9 properly, let alone handle it as well as it does, and it handles it amazingly well. So hopefully, this particular example and test here will be useful for other people who are thinking about using VP9-based source footage. I'll also explain what I had to do to the footage to get it to go into Resolve as well. Anyway, just a couple of things about the setup here. So I am on 17.3.1. Also, as far as the project is concerned, I'm in 4K UHD, 59.94 frames per second, basically 4K 60. Now, as far as playback is concerned, I'm not using optimized media or proxies, and the timeline is in full resolution mode as well. Also as well, I am on a MacBook Air M1. Now, this is the 512 gigabyte version, which basically means it's got the eight GPU cores and stuff. Now, what I'm gonna do here is show you the actual properties of the media, and I'll explain how I got the media to work within Resolve. So if you come up here to the inspector, as we can see, it is VP9 and it is 59.94 and it is basically 4K UHD. So frame rate and resolution are matching the project. But importantly here as well, it is linear PCM. Now, if we have a quick look at the file down here, this is an MKV file. So what it is, this particular footage here started off life inside a Sony PS5. It's basically a PS5 internal game recording at 4K60 HDR. Now, the thing is, with inside the Sony, it uses the WebM wrapper to put the codecs in and various metadata and stuff like that so what i've done here is to basically just remux it into an mkv file now of course as well the sony uses opus audio which is something that resolve won't see so during the remuxing from webm to mkv I've also done a conversion of the Opus Audio to uncompressed PCM. Now, during that particular conversion, despite the fact that it is a transcode, there's realistically, there's no audible loss of quality because we're going from a lesser format to a higher format with the audio. But more importantly there though, the VP9 source codec is basically just transferred from one container to another. So we are now dealing exactly one-to-one -one with the VP9 footage that was encoded with inside the ps5 so like i say basically that's how you prepare footage to bring it into davinci resolve if anyone's interested in such things i can show a workflow on how to do that if people are interested let me know in the comments and i'll most certainly do a video in the future about that but anyway here we go so in the timeline in fact let me just shut down the inspector there so within the timeline here that's the file now watch this In fact, I'll go full screen. Okay, so as we can see there, that plays extremely well. There is still maybe the odd little frame that goes a bit weird, and then when you kind of like go into full screen, that you know, backwards and forwards, it kind of just does drop a couple of frames here and there. But to all intents and purpose, this is playing perfectly well. Now I'm gonna play back through again, but this time, if we have a look at the frame buffer up here, we will see the frame buffer fills up amazingly quick and just stays at 59.94, which is basically telling us that Resolve is actually able to play all this in real time. So don't forget, this is VP9 4K60 playing full res with inside, you know, a 4K60 project within Resolve. So like I say, keep an eye on the frame buffer up here as we can see straight away 59.94 and it is going to maintain that buffer as well Sorry. 
Okay, so as we can see there, that is just playing so well. It is unbelievable. Now, as far as scrubbing and stuff is concerned, it kind of is what it is. It is, it is what you would expect with the differences between inter and interframe codex and stuff like that. Also, you can nudge very easily with it. So the nudge functions are really, really responsive and stuff. And if I do a bit of JKL, it doesn't work so well. Hold on. Okay, so the JKL... It's kind of usable maybe, but again, it's that difference between using inter and interframe codex as far as transport functions are concerned and stuff like that. Anyways, there we have it then. So if anybody is interested in a workflow as well to do with uh, how I went from WebM to .mkv and stuff like that, let me know in the comments. I'll most certainly do a tutorial on how to do that because this basically now opens up like the possibilities of me being able to edit PS5 footage from within side Resolve. And more than that, as we can see here, or as you may have noticed, that washed out look within the footage, this is HDR footage that I'm dealing with here. So Resolve is allowing me to edit PS5 footage and then export it out and then upload it to YouTube and still maintain HDR all the way through absolutely fantastic anyways if you've liked this video keep an eye on me resolve playlist i'll be doing kind of more of these types of very specific codec resolution type tests and once i'm more familiar with the editing processes with inside resolve i'll start doing some workflow videos with things like that as well and if you've liked the video yeah give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing to my channel and all that stuff i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now